everybody. Welcome to FNS Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, back with the bonus episode. With me, as always, my teenage son, Jackson. Say hello, Jack. I had taco. You did? Have, yeah, we left the house taco like... Taco Bell, whatever thing. We left the house like normal people. It was kind of yeah. weird. Went out, got different takeout from different places, went and ate it in a park outside, because you can't still eat in restaurants where we live, and then went and got ice cream after through a place that has drive through ice cream so that's legal too Kawartha. and then we came home and decided we enjoyed a wrestling show last night so we should maybe come down yep. and talk about it mm-hmm. whereas backlash we just were like okay let's just i guess yeah backlash we're like we'll get around to it when we get around to it but this one we um right because people seem to like the pay-per-view one so they do and this one where it's just like this was actually good yeah and i'm actually yeah i'm kind of excited to talk about it so i thought we would do that we should probably get right into it don't you think because it might take us a while and i want to get in that pool when we're done sure all right so let's talk about uh pool sucks double or nothing 2021 from Mm -hmm. aew so third installment of the pay-per-view i did watch most of the buy-in uh you were still gaming i think so you missed this what uh, the only thing I really want to talk about was the match that was on the buy-in, which was Serena Deeb versus Riho for the uh, NWA Women's Championship. And in this match, Serena Deeb defeated Riho by submission uh, after slamming Riho's knee repeatedly into the mat and applying Ooh. her finishing submission. Do you remember the name Serenity of it? Serenity Lock. Thank you. Uh, and she... I know that Usos used to call it, or, or it just was called Tequila Sunrise, but right. she, she calls it And she Serenity got it in Lock. so deep that Riho's leg was back so far that her yeah, foot is a freaking midget so she can probably just like bend back like her that. foot was touching the back of her head so it was it looked pretty awesome um interesting things deeb worked as a heel in this match remember i noticed even on dynamite she was more aggressive in her last match and one i, think... I feel like that helps her and two i feel like she is kind of working to pretty baby face people well if you're like working Reho, what are you gonna Reho, do right? yeah uh, so she looked really good. A ton of submissions because she's the women, woman of a thousand holes, like uh, holds, sort of like Dean Malenko was. Um, so she looked really good here, man. And full marks for both of them working because at this point in the day, the sun was still shining on the ring almost entirely. So I can't imagine. It must have been crazy hot. So I thought it was actually a terrific match. I've come around fully on deep she was fantastic here yeah she's just kind of the person who doesn't have much character but can wrestle so, yeah which i think that's fine like. and she did a really good job as the, an intense heel here and i wasn't sure going into it if she could pull it off or not but she was really good um it was so good in fact that my wife your mother kind of stuck around and sat on the couch and watched this whole match before she left so that's a pretty good sign i honestly that's thought a feather in their cap i thought this was an excellent match and good enough to be on the main show uh to be perfectly honest in with you replacement of other things. other things that we'll get to so yeah uh we'll get into the actual card on the main show now so we're gonna sort of break it up jack did a few matches i did a few matches so the opener is hangman adam page versus brian cage and that's one that you sort of took some notes on so go ahead and uh, yeah. let us know um so hangman got the win in a short and pretty action-packed opener it was yeah. like 12 minutes yes um highlights include a crucifix bomb by hangman and a lot of cage stuff here as he suplexed page like Rather than in, outside in, it's inside out um, yep. onto the stage, which is pretty cool. It was. Um, he, he avoided a buckshot, and he hit a German suplex, and he did a power bomb and a buckle bomb um, before Paige uh, got a jackknife pin for two uh, to avoid an, a third power bomb. Uh, Cage got a discus lariat and a spinning liger bomb, which is a sit-up power bomb. Looked for awesome, two, yeah. Which looked awesome, yes. Oh, and Hangman hit an F5, which was pretty cool. He did, that's right. Um, uh, and the match came to an end when Starks and Hook tried to get Cage to cheat with that to W title, but Cage kind of uh, denied that, and then he hit, ate a buck shot, which got Hangman the win. Right, so it's sort of furthering that story that um, Cage is part of Team Taz, but seems to have some like right. baby which face I, leanings. I prefer Cage's heel. I mean, this is, could be an interesting storyline, but I th- yeah. feel like he works... I liked it when it was just him and Taz. It was the idea that he thought he could beat Hangman without any help from anybody else, and they sort of helped anyways, and he didn't want the help, and then it led to the finish of the match. He Uh, probably could have, honestly. I thought this was a fantastic opener. Like, talk about just your fun, um, really quick, really hard-hitting opener. Fun overall. Like, Cage continued. He looked like a beast in this. Some of his power moves are just crazy. So he looks really strong in defeat here. Uh, and Hangman is just a phenomenal professional wrestler. I don't know what else to say. He's never disappointed me since AEW has started. 
Uh, as we expected, right, he gets his win back here, and I think that's the right move. I would like to get a rubber match. And honestly, af coming off of the buy-in match and then this match, <clears throat> I was super hyped for this because this I thought these two matches, this match was really, really good. Oh, exactly what I'm looking for in an opener. I really liked it. You? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I thought it was a great match, an absolute perfect choice for an opener. It's what you want, really. It's just, like, short, action-packed, and it, it was, it was a crowd hype match. I guess. That's like, yeah, something I didn't say hype. about the uh, buy-in match. The crowd was so hype, obviously, right? They're in at a pay-per-view. It was the first match, so the crowd right. was crazy into yeah, it. Yeah, and so this really got the crowd hype. Uh, Cage, I thought, had some great offense. Paige also got a good win i thought this was a great way to open the pay-per-view nothing wrong with this yeah i was uh, this really got my energy up because this is you know we're settling in for a four-hour pay-per-view here we're gonna be looking right. at a midnight and this sort of uh got me energy up this match was awesome i thought for sure uh next we got the young bucks versus uh mox and kingston for the tag titles right and the bucks did retain um in a terrific match after hitting so the hit mox with b trigger or bte trigger and they just kept like hitting it they just like over and spammed over. it over and over and over and they again. just sort of are holding mox's arms so they're right. holding they him up and just repeating him it. over and over and over probably again. more than they needed to which i guess was kind of the point right right yeah um i like some highlights were like matt mocking the hot tag again and hitting a like a fired up flurry which is yeah, pretty funny. at one point what was it kingston didn't really know quite what was going on and matt jumped into his corner like he After was mox. Out mox yeah, yeah that was so really that funny. kingston looked like he was about to tag in matt matt was really really like super healy here right in this yeah, match like he over tends the top to do that now. it didn't bother me i'm just yeah. some people won't like uh, it mox was on fire he got an actual hot tag from kingston um he had a double ddt on the box which was sold i thought awesome yeah it looked, it looked like they took it straight vertical <laughs> and like at the exact same time yep. almost uh matt got a pretty good near fall with spraying mox with cold spray and hit him hitting him with the bottle um, which busted him open. Right. Uh, Bucks had a Meltzer driver on the ramp to Mox, which is pretty cool. It's not my favorite. It never looks like Nick's adding that much. I mean, it's cool in theory, but it's really just the pile I think driver. it looks better when he's doing it in the ring when he kind of like gets a 450 and yeah. comes down. Yeah, when he actually... This one was, I would agree, a little... He was he not assisting it much, much, but it's still cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, repeated, they did just kind of, kind of kicking Mox back and forth. Yes. Um, a shoe assisted doomsday device by Mox and Kingston was pretty awesome. Right. So the $15,000 Dior Jordans came back into play that Mox and Kingston right. had stolen from them. Right. Uh, yeah. very super kicks by the box. And in particular where they faked one on Kingston and then they, like he got his hands up, they kicked him in the leg and then right. just kicked him in the face anyway. Yes. Yeah, it was cool. Which I thought was really funny. Uh, double super kicks to both Mox and Kingston and the BTA trigger uh, got them the win, obviously. Um, thoughts? Um, wow was my first comment. Like, what a match and what a way to just continue the energy of this show, I thought. Three awesome matches, including the buy-in right away. Uh, this match built as it went along, right? Which a lot of great matches that get a lot of time do. And I'm sure there's many people that are going to complain. I've actually seen some people already about the lack of rules being followed. What's the point of having a ref if they're never going to enforce the five count or anything? I don't know. It doesn't. Yeah, but it's ref lanes. You just, I don't know. I don't know. If go this sometimes. is what, if this is what I get out of it, then fine. Have the refs like this was super fun and an amazing match. Right, I, so it doesn't bother me. I feel like the same, me. the people who are going to be complaining, but that would be the same people saying Sting did amazing. And if you repeatedly have an issue with that, I'm not sure why you're watching AEW because at yeah, this point you're gonna have to just deal with. You it. either have to accept it or watch something else. Uh, like I said, Matt was fully embracing being a heel here at some point i just found myself captivated by this match um say whatever you like about the bucks i i, I don't even think i want to like the bucks but every single time they deliver right like right, every match I feel is like good sometimes like i don't know it's, they're kind of cody-esque but then like this their matches are so good it's too good uh so i'm happy with the result too i just think the experience like actual I tag team should win here gone either way and i was fine either way because i think both i like both teams i don't think a mox and kingston need the belts to be yeah. entertaining uh and b they need to gain some more experience as a tag team and exposure uh, too and if that means they have to give this another go that's fine but an awesome match for sure yeah what'd you think uh, i thought this was awesome an absolute tag team clinic uh bucks are great playing the heels especially matt I love his mockery of the hot tag. I find that amusing every time. And that's the difference. You just said they're kind of like Cody, and I agree, but they're heels, so it's awesome, right? Right. Whereas if and Cody then their matches just, are awesome. If Cody just turns heel, I'll right. be fine. If he just embraced being a prick, then but, he would be fine. Yeah, so that's the difference. The Bucks are heels, and it's it well, works. And, and they, Omega, to be fair. They are hateable dudes. Right. Uh, Mox had a great flurry off of the hot tag. 
Bucks just oh they always nail their super kicks. Let's be honest. There's a re it there there's a reason they made the super kick party their thing. Yep. Uh, cold spray spot was a great near fall. Melter driver on the stage was cool. Uh, the doomsday device was awesome. And I like that the Bucks really had to like spam the BTE trigger to beat Mox. Yes, I think they did. That Whether they had to or good. they chose to, either way, it's cool. Well, I feel like they might have had to. I mean, Mox did. He was dominant pretty much the whole. Yeah, and he's year. known for never dying, right? So. Right. So I thought that was a good way to make him still look kind of good in defeat. Yeah. So this uh, great pay-per-view's, match, good result. That pay per view is just killing it to this point for me. Right. Um. And then we got the Casino Battle Royale. Some highlights were Penta dressing as the Joker and like. Damn, that man will never not look. Yeah, cool. he had a pretty, like, pretty he, uh, standout. It gear. was just, it was so wild, and he even had like just white paint with the red, uh, kind of smile, like yep. just like Joker esque paint, and he had like the cards on the back with ceremony. It just, it looked so crazy, but like he still looked awesome. Like I, that was something like, we didn't mention about the Bucks gear. It was making me laugh. How it was oh yeah, they had like the pocket like, says pocket on right, it. It says pockets, <laughs> and like there was something else there that was. Funny. Yeah, they were funny. Yeah, that, that was funny. And then, so the actual Joker entry was Leo Rush, um, which I think is cool. They kind of wasted in it here. Like, he didn't really do much. I agree. So I would have liked something it's more part memorable. of my comments, yeah. But um, I, I think he, he'll he be cool here. I just wish he could have gotten maybe a better debut because so I, I like him. Do right? you know, like, is he signed? It wasn't just, a, I, I assume, know. but I, I would assume know. so. Yeah. Um, If he is, that would be cool. I would He's like good. him. And I would think that would even give them more reason to get some sort of, like, cruiser nope. division no in why not? It no would be weight good. class belts no why not because it eliminates people from it and i don't so it just what? bugs me so then you're stuck with guys of a certain weight i don't so, know i don't like it i don't like it they could go back and forth no want well then what, what would your solution be <laughs> i don't we don't need another belt there's why plenty not? of belts if you there's want then not. go with trios or i don't know i would think they need some sort of other mid card belt i don't think so i think they're good well, anyway then you, you make when you make the, you make the tnt tele television tell right and then it's not on pay-per-views, then I think you bring in another title so that there's uh, something else on I, I I like limited titles, personally. They mean well, more when there's only limited, a couple. It would still be limited, but they're just, I don't know, there's not enough. I don't want any more. I you think say they enough. literally have too many people, and they only have, like, one, two I don't titles. think they need more titles. I don't know what you want me to tell you. I, I don't, don't like, like, a thousand titles, because then they don't they really mean very much. Titles. Anyways, it's a topic for another day, I think. Uh, Jungle Boy won Last Lemon and Christian Cage by ironically outworking him. it's impossible he <laughs> he swung <laughs> around the post and then he kind of did like a backdrop that was really cool it was like parkour kind of deal yeah and i find it really funny that well and it's one of those things too that like if he doesn't do that perfectly he's gonna be eliminated right <laughs> like if he slips and falls and we were saying because christian was outside the ring for a lot like outworking people could be like outworking meant like, hiding outside the ring for 12 right, minutes or whatever well, it was like, oh like working instead of out shooting right like which, out work as an opposite of shoot like a yeah like a fake fake like oh, it's too meta people. now my brain's exploding <laughs> um but i thought this was the first lull in the action for me I, um there was also a few replacements right among the entrance of this match and right, no grayson wasn't here um i don't think any Blade. explanation was given i didn't hear any anyway so and if they're gonna replace people i wish they would have chosen better replacements maybe made this more interesting i least. just also think so few people were actually believable as potential winners I didn't think there were any giant high spots that stood out. Right, and you made the note that like the eliminations were fairly standard. All of the right? eliminations were really basic, just like barely falls over onto right, the apron. Right, and I just felt the there ground. wasn't enough action between the eliminations as well, right? Like, yeah, I there agree. Was just, there wasn't much going know, on. I find that like, you even find more stuff in the, your average Royal Rumble. Yep. Um, it's the day after the show, obviously. I'm struggling to remember any major things from it. I do remember the caster rap on the way in being cool. Oh, yeah. That was um, awesome. I did think that Seidel's early elimination might have been an accident and that maybe he was supposed to hold on and stay in a bit longer because uh, it seemed quick. My favorite part was Penta just being there. Yeah. Rush was a cool surprise and is he's he's honestly a pretty yeah, awesome he's good. wrestler. But I think a lot of the fans had gotten their hopes up for some a bigger name than that. I've, so yeah, I for I sure did. I was so surprised. I was like, oh, cool, Leo Rush. Like that's that's cool. He looked really but, quick, but he didn't last very long in the match. Right for making his debut yeah. it was kind of an odd choice. I thought. I'm not a, w- a fan of the way this match is organized in general with, with the four suits and all the people coming out at once. I think they need to do something to sort of freshen it up. I am happy to see Jungle Boy win. I feel like this is them sort of giving him a trial run close or at the main event to see how he does i don't know if he will like he's he, good he's not, he, i don't know if he will they maybe. just have plans for the future right this is like let's put him there for a second and see how it I goes i really want him and luchasaurus to 
be tag champs i think they're just so awesome it gives him a little bit of experience right i don't think he's gonna win or stay at the top of the card no, this is a way for them to provide him with like and, an opportunity and, uh, right? kind of stall omega yeah for uh hangman i feel this could have been a bit shorter uh it was a stacked card and a lengthy pay-per-view um but i guess it got lots of talent on the show i don't think it was a bad battle royal i just i just didn't love it um, i'm wondering if they like because there was some memorable stuff from last year's right and this right. year i don't think next year i'll remember anything from this they match, could probably. do another title for when they introduce rampage yeah. like maybe not exclusive but just because like i feel like the roster and expansion shows but i don't know anyway so i don't think this was a bad match it suffers a bit from following the ones before it to be honest right. um other than the final elimination i think most eliminations were pretty basic they were mostly people being knocked off the apron or thrown over the top rope normally um, I'm pretty pre- pleased with the result, though. Um, the Joe Grantham was cool enough. Like, uh, not quite what you were expecting, but not, like, a disappointment either, right. I don't think. No. Necessarily. Um, and Penta looked cool. Um, and Christian didn't win, so. You're happy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, we then got a brief segment to honor the military because it's Memorial Day in the United States. And then, of course, yeah, they're going to really springboard care. off of that right into the match with the American, American Dream, Dream for tonight. Cody Rhodes versus Anthony Gogo. Right. Uh, versus Anthony Agogo with QT Marshall. Arn Anderson's with Cody. So Cody wins this, of course, as if there was any other outcome possible. In 11 like minute the worst match. worst vertebraker I've ever seen. With a vertebraker. Um, we had Rhodes t- got a gut punch early and he had to sell it the entire match because, as we and all know, he almost died. But Cody, he's a soldier, man. He powered through on yep. this one. So, of course, um, he's selling that the whole time because Gogo has the most powerful body punches ever. A Gogo hit no, an punches, Olympic period. slam along the way. QT got involved at one point and Arn had to chase him away. A Gogo was bleeding by the end of this. He hit a frog splash uh, and then Cody hit a vertebraker um, to end it. What did you think? Uh, I wasn't expecting much. Didn't get much either. A Gogo looked fine. Um... He did pretty standard stuff, though. Um, I guess about as good. Like, I think he did the bare minimum of what I would have expected. Yeah. Like, he had frog spots, which was okay, and Olympic slam, which was fine. Um, so, yeah, he was fine. Uh, Cody did his usual crap, and they really didn't do Ogogo any favors by having him lose clean to a vertebraker, which... I didn't think it looked t- that bad. I mean, I he hated he it, but... I think he just took to the... He took it to the back, which I just, I think makes it kind of lose some of his impact. I think he should take it higher up. Like, obviously not make it I think it that's dangerous. exactly what he was trying to avoid, probably. Right, but I think, I don't know, it should look, I feel like Vertebreaker is supposed to look better than that. Yeah. I don't know. And so, I don't know, this wasn't great. I didn't love it. The buildup was awful, Um, especially if you watched our flagship show, you would know. Yeah. Um, This wasn't great. I don't think this really belonged on a pay-per-view card. This was a dynamite match at best, I think. Uh, least favorite match on the show, for sure. Yeah, I also wasn't expecting much from this. Ogogo's not an experienced wrestler. I also couldn't stand the build to this. A couple of the promotional whatevers. Just, I would have changed the channel <laughs> if I weren't in. reviewing it for people. I thought Ogogo looked pretty good here, probably better than you think he did. Considering he's done almost no moves since being in AEW, he hit some cool high-impact moves, right? Various suplexes and things like that. Um, I didn't see him string a lot of things together, obviously, yet at this point. Maybe he's not quite ready. It was just kind of the odd, impressive move here and there. I think he has good heel charisma, though. Uh, but this match basically, for me, feels like a heel versus heel match, right? Because Cody's not a baby face. Yeah, or I don't a care heel versus say. a miscast baby face. Um, the crowd's lack of energy and interest was clear here. And I'm not trying to be pile on Cody. I, I don't blame them. I even pointed it out to Jack while we were watching him. I look at the crowd now compared to the matches before this. Um, it was a stark contrast to the buy-in match and the matches before this one for sure. No, and I don't blame them. I wouldn't have cared either. I don't think this needed to be, nor does it really belong on a major pay-per-view they only have four a year right but who could possibly tell cody that he can't have a match on the pay-per-view right and if he's if he insists on having a match do a good one i'm sure he thought he was making a star here and a gogo did impress me somewhat but compared to the opener in the bucks match this yeah. just looked weak right this on- was this would have been like i don't think i did but this would be your bathroom break match yeah like on the plus side it was the shortest match to this point at just under 11 minutes so not great but was kind of short for a pay-per-view. At least it was short. We then move into the TNT Championship match, which is sort of the newly crowned Miro versus Lance Archer in a, what I would call a Haas fight, probably. Mm-hmm. And Miro does end up retaining the title in this uh, a 10-minute, just a slugfest. 
ended when Archer passed out to the game over submission hold. Some notable stuff along the way. Uh, right away, Archer dove over the top onto Miro to begin the match. He also put Miro through a table on the outside with a spine buster at one point. Um, Miro got Archer with a belly-to-belly -belly suplex like over the barricade onto some fans, obviously planted wrestlers, I assume. Uh, Archer went for a moonsault off the top at one point, but Miro moved and kicked him in the head that I thought looked pretty good. Jake Roberts, of course, gets involved on behalf of Archer, and he brings a bag to the ring similar to obviously we're supposed to believe there's a snake in there. Miro hits a super kick to Archer, and then he grabs the bag and throw, throws it pretty far up yeah, the ramp, right? So the so, I wonder if like, there's obviously a fake snake. Obviously they no didn't snake in there. They didn't no use chance. It. I was anticipating like someone switches it out because they were going to use it, but they didn't. No. Uh, the, so yeah, obviously no snake in the bag, just him chucking it up the ramp. Which was amusing, yeah. At one point, Miro kicks the middle rope while Archer sort of between the ropes to crotch him and then suplexes him back into the ring, what I thought looked good. The Machka kick, whatever he's calling it now, looked awesome, and then the game over hooked in, and the match was over. What did you think? Um, I think it was a good and short Haas fight. I wasn't expecting too much, oddly. Just, I don't know. I think we both were just kind of like... Just, there was a weird feel to feel Archer like, leading into right, this. Right, like, I just feel like I, he's been kind of miscast, so I, I just feel like his kind of... His cool factor, I don't know, whatever. He just he just feels like diminished. I don't know. He's and it's not weird because he's cutting better promos as a baby face, but I don't like him as a baby face, right? And so I don't it's think kind of like give and take. Yeah. Um, but it did beat my expectations because they admittedly weren't that high. Um, solid action. Um, pretty good action pack. Ten minutes. Only complaint is I think Miro could have defended in a better match with someone else. No right. offense to Lance Archer. Just this isn't really his time. And the answer to just, he really does feel miscast as babyface. Just, even like his, it, his theme's literally everybody dies. How does a babyface have a theme where it, it almost says everybody feel, dies? It almost feels like they, they wanted him to face Miro, so they forced him to be a baby. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, they just shoehorned it in there somehow. No, they wanted him to be, uh, didn't work for they me. They wanted to align him with Sting. Uh, I was entertained by this match. I think it was the perfect length. Uh, I would have liked it more if it were at all believable that Archer could win because I don't think it was here for even a second. But it was definitely a hard-hitting match. Had a couple of really cool spots going through tables and over barricades and stuff. So a lot of the stuff outside the ring I thought looked pretty good. And uh, at the end of the day, Miro looks like a dominant champion here, which I think he needs to. He adds a quality win to his reign. Uh, it was a solid big band match. I wasn't blown away, but I did like the match. Mm-hmm. Uh, that leads us then into the AEW Women's Championship match, which is Hikaru Shida, who's been reigning for over a year now, right? And just got an upgraded belt. Yep. Versus the challenging Brit Doctor, Brick, Brit Baker DMD, with Rebel by her side, as always, with her crutch. Um, so Baker, why did I put retains her title? She definitely didn't retain, but she won the title. Yay! Um, a really highly competitive, lengthy match. She made Sheeta tap out to her lockjaw submission after about 17 minutes. Some notable stuff along the way. Right away, we get battling Let's Go Sheeta and DMD chants, which I thought was nice to hear. Just having a crowd, let alone a really hot crowd that was participating a lot, was cool to see. Uh, and people like Baker. Yes, they love her. They love both of these, I think. Sheeta went for her running attack off a chair, as she does, but Baker avoided it. And then Sheeta hit a diving attack off the turnbuckles onto Baker and Reba on the floor. Britt called for the glove at one point, as she does from Reba, and it was a fancy new one, I guess, right, for the pay-per-view. It was more than just the usual rubber glove she uh, gets out. Sheeta at one point hit a nice fisherman's neckbreaker that I liked. Um, she hit a superplex as well. Um, Britt took an accidental crutch shot from uh, Rebel at one point, and Reba. that led to uh, Falcon's arrow, which I thought looked good by Sheeta as well. Rebel eventually gets kicked out of the match for all of her involvement. And we get a st curb stomp on the title by Baker as well, somewhere near the end of it. What did you think of this match with Baker finally getting her championship? Yeah, um, so it started kind of slow, but picked up. I feel like good matches usually do kind of start slow. Yep. And they build and build. That's usually how it goes, and that's a good thing. Uh, it was good thoroughly. Um, definitely climax towards the end. And they picked the right result, for sure. Both did great here. I'm, I feel like they could have shifted into a bit of a higher gear. Um, but overall, a great match and good for Baker for finally getting the big win. It was tough because I think ba Baker was really emotional after winning, but she's a heel, so she kind of had to like, not she can't cry or whatever, right? She has to look like her right. character would. So I think that was a struggle. I thought this match as well, I have the same thing. It started out slowly. By the end, I was pretty into it. Both of these women worked really hard. 
Um, there were some cool near near falls for each of them. Obviously, well, not obviously. For me, it was nowhere near as good as the Baker Thunder Rosa bloodbath from television. Yeah, but I feel like those are two very different kind of matches. But more comparable, if I'm being totally honest, I, I might have enjoyed the women's match on the buy-in just as much as this one, which is surprising. But I highly recommend that mat- match. Uh, regardless, this was a division that was a glaring weakness, right? When this company started, it's now so much stronger. Right. Um, and we've got the face of the division in place. They've built... And it shows a... how good this company is at improving things. Like yes. They remember, I remember the Dark Order being like, everybody hated them. Yep. And they've improved tenfold. Like, I think anything like... Like, the, where there's a complaint raise, like, usually they're good yeah, at fixing. They like, deal Nightmare with Collective it. got booted. Well, right, and when like, and when this division started, Brit sucked, frankly, right? Brit did suck. And now she's a mate. They've built her into right, the, like the, the face of this division. The dentist gimmick, like the real life uh, credits of that or whatever, like it really lends itself so well to like a heel character. She just embraced being a heel, and she's smart, right. and she's funny, and she's works yeah. her butt off. So. I obviously don't know what the plans are, but I would love to see in the future a Tay Conti Baker match they could build to because what a baby face she is and a super heel. So I would love to see that. But I thought this was another good match on this show, a notch below the Cage Page and the Bucks tag team match for me. But I thought this was a good match. Mm-hmm. Uh, we then get a video package showing Darby Allen out somewhere with his skateboard and then Sting's driving around in a car with his face paint on, of course. Alan gets into the car and they're on their way to the building. And How dare you think Sting would not wear his face thing? Sting just says to Darby Allen, it's showtime. And that leads us into their match, which is Sting and Darby Allen versus Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. And I didn't put it in my notes, but we get singlet Sting, right? Yeah. <laughs> he sheds the t-shirt and which, Jack was quickly like, put it back on. Yeah, like. I. F- He's 61, man. Give him a break. He looks good. Which is I hope why I, look I like think that. he shouldn't have done that, cause he's friggin' sixty or whatever. Like, anyways, I don't know. I feel like the shirt makes him look like I don't know, like kind of old. Cause I feel like he's just wearing like a sweater or whatever. But like, this shows that he's actually old. He I think. is actually old. Um, so Sting and, and Darby Allen, no surprise, win a, a fairly competitive match when Sting hits the Scorpion Death Drop. Unfortunately, that's enough to pin Scorpio Sky after twelve and a half minute match. <sighs> Notable stuff. Uh, before the match even started, there was a whole bunch going on. Allen got to ringside, dove on to Paige while Sting was battling with Sky. Sky hit a suplex to Sting on this on the stage, which was a bit surprising. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Sting, of course, got right back up, tossed Sky off of the sort of prop stacked poker chips that were part of the ringside set, and then Sting dives, quote unquote, jumps on to the heels on the floor from the chips. Uh, other things, Sky hit his slingshot cutter on Darby Allen that I always think looks good. Yeah, he kind of like flips over instead of just like kind of just going over. Yeah, um, the ref, I think, was Aubrey, right? She missed at one point a tag by Alan to Sting. Well, I saw that she actually did see it. And so this leads to Darby taking more of a beating. I thought it was a bit odd because Sting did not protest this missed call at all. He just like walked over to the corner and took his spot. Like, I guess, what are you going to do? But normally they protest a little bit, right? Because they did definitely make a tag. Uh, Paige picked up Allen over his head at one point and press slammed him from the ring over the top rope, over the barricade, and into the front uh, front row. Apparently, Didn't he, like ego edge him. I thought it was. Or, appar- I don't know. Apparently, I don't he. I don't know. Probably he landed on his two brothers that were sitting at ringside. No, I think it was just a gorilla press. I don't mm-hmm. think it was. Uh, so I saw that he caught his leg on the barricade. So I, think I think he think just gorilla pressed him. I, don't know. I could be wrong. Sting sort of hit a code red, I guess. Uh, Paige and Allen. We're both locked in submissions, but close enough to sort of gouge each other's eyes at one point. Um, Sky went for a cutter, but Sting held the ropes, and then Sting hit his scorpion death drop for the win. What did you think, Jack? Uh, this was fine and better for the parts where Darby was facing either Paige or Sky, because, well, none of them are supposedly ret- retired old man or old men going for last hurrah. Such an ageist. He sucks. <laughs> uh, Sting was about as good as you could ask for, but like you said, he's good for his age, but not for any age. Right. Um, and I guess he was good for his age and as good as you could expect, but that doesn't mean in the slightest he should have been here okay. at all. Uh, Sky and Paige being undefeated going into this m- match makes this suck even more because their streak was ruined for no reason just to get a Sting, old man Sting, a win. <laughs> he does not, he doesn't need it at all. He's, he should be retired. He shouldn't even be here. And Sting looked really 
old in the singlet. Uh, overall, fine, I guess, but the only reason it's not the worst is because of Cody and Agogo, um, and I don't know, it was just a loss for the sake of a loss. Like, I don't know, they didn't need to lose. Sting's not losing yet, I told you. Yeah, I know, but he, he shouldn't even be in the position where he should be winning or losing. He should be not here. I thought this match was all right, maybe even pretty good at times. I can't say I really liked it that much. Some of the moves from Paige and Sky looked pretty sweet. The stunner, the toss of Allen over the barricade. But this could have easily been an episode of Dynamite, I think. I don't think it needed to be on this show that was quite lengthy already. And I'm sure people are going to rave about Sting's performance here. But And he did fine. Honestly, he did. But really, does he need to be taking time on a pay-per-view away from some younger, more interesting wrestler? That's my thing. I don't want to see what I saw 30, 35 years ago. I want to see what's next. Right. Who's the next I don't even star? think you're getting what um, you saw all those years ago with this... And, and I know it's only one spot in one match on the card, but still, I don't need to see Sting wrestle in 2021. That's just me, I guess, and you, sounds like. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm wrong, and he does great ratings. In that case, they're going to keep using him, I guess. I think um, it's just for nostalgia. I really like Paige and Sky together. It sucks that uh, they had to take the loss here. And I think people are just going to be lining up to lose to Sting for a while until there's some reason to put somebody over him, because I don't see him losing anytime soon. Um, so next, we're talking about the penultimate match on this show, which was a... They don't call it triple threat, do they? What do they call uh, it? I don't know. Three-way, I guess. For the AEW... I, I'll, I'll, I'll just call it a triple threat. It's not. Probably. That's WWE no, verbiage. Uh, so the AEW World Championship match, Kenny Omega with Don Callis versus Pac versus Orange Cassidy. And I, not a surprise to me or you, I don't think. Kenny Omega retains this title. Really entertaining match. He hit Pac with multiple belt shots and then hit a crucifix pin to Cassidy in just after 27 minutes. Some notable stuff. Uh, I gasped, I think, when the huge midair collision between Pac and Omega. Oh, yeah, towards the beginning. Both going for running cross bodies right, near yeah, the beginning. Yeah, they really ran into it. Uh, Cassidy hit a double Hurricane Rana that's kind of cool. Uh, Pac hit a moonsault off the ropes onto Omega at one point. Omega hit a rolling senton on Pac right into a backstabber on Cassidy. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. Nice combo. Omega and Cassidy exchanged multiple pin attempts. And remember, one of them was bridging out from the other person, and Pac broke it up with his. The 450. Uh, I was hoping for a black arrow on that. That looked that really been nice. Way too cool. uh, lots of snapdragons, lots of V triggers. We got hands in pockets, dives, and stuff by Cassidy. We got a really nice tiger driver by Omega to Cassidy that looked cool. A really nasty looking brain buster uh, by Pac to Cassidy at one point that I loved. Tons of orange punches to everybody for near, near falls during this one. Um, what did you think of the match? Uh, it started slow like any good match does. Uh, but once these guys got going, they sure went for it. They did. Uh, there's a ton going on. All three of them got great offense in. I think when you put three top talents into this, whether you think Cassie's going to stay in the main event, he's good in the ring is what he's I mean. He's good, yeah. Right? So he's not, put, I don't think he's on the level of right. the other two, but he's but good. But when you put three good in-ring wrestlers in the ring together, you're yep. going to get something good. Um, and I like um, that instead of being packed with one belt repeatedly, Omega decided to like yep. just hit him with each, each one belt one by one, which I thought was pretty funny. And he has four belts, so yep. he, that's just four. <laughs> he's callous chucking. It was good. Him. It was entertaining. Uh, the action was fast and furious. Even the lulls weren't that bad. Overall, a great first like three way match for AEW. Like one. Yeah, they these. really haven't done any, right? They really so. haven't. Yeah, I think they did like a few like multi man person matches and like their first events or whatever but like one those weren't for major titles too that was like they just kind of did whatever in that right stage uh i thought same thing this match started off slowly but it got a ton of time so it kind of needed to by the end i thought this was an excellent match and i may be biased i probably am but i thought pack looked like the biggest star of the three here he did the most stuff that i I was that is (laughs) super impressed with everybody looked good I never bought any of the near falls entirely, unfortunately, but there were some really good ones included. I think that's just we all know what's going to be Omega's downfall. There was so much going on in this match. There were never really any breaks once it got going after a bit of a slow start. I thought Kenny and Pac especially looked really crisp, uh, and Pac is just so insanely quick. Orange Cassidy proved he can hang. I I don't think he's quite at their level, um, but... He did really well. And I think I thought, he'll be like a somewhat credible challenger. Like, I feel like he'd be a good mid card champion and then a credible uh, challenger. Uh, like, I think I it's know. more his character that, that for me, that that character is not. Yeah. Uh, that's just me being an old man, probably. But that 
whole comedy lazy hands that's not a champion of your company character right mm -hmm. it's not a bad thing you got to have other people but um i think he'll stay at least around the yeah so i thought this was a really good match i thought <laughs> it's funny it's a good thing you helped me with these notes because what was the pay-per-view for impact where i gapped on like three matches i uh, almost complete, under siege. i almost completely forgot about stadium stampede i thought we were done and ready to go and jack's like uh, are we going to do, am I doing Stadium Stampede? I'm like, oh yeah, that happened. So you almost did it again. I did. I did. I would have left no out offense, Stadium but you're Stampede. Old. I am kind of old. <laughs> and I know how you hate old people like Sting. So you No, I hate them. old people when they're invading wrestling companies who don't need old people wrestling. Yes. All right. So you tell us about Stadium Stampede since I forgot it existed for a minute there. That's not cool. So go ahead. Um. Yeah, we got Stadium Stampede, Inner Circle, Pinnacle. And the Inner Circle one what was an all over the place brawl uh, throughout the stadium. Definitely and was. Ended up in Daly's place. Yep. Uh, inner Circle entered on zip lines, which was lame, questionable. Not zip lines; they were like, like repelling down the. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know what to call I it. I thought it was ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, highlights include a top rope cutter by Guevara on Spears in the ring, like the stadium. Yeah. So ring. they kind of went to the ring right away. Though it's like everybody sort of paired off, right? And Spears which, and. They did do in the last one, but I feel like they also were kind of like intertwined. It as felt well. more forced this time, right? Right. This one I just felt like the top guys paired off, the mid card is paired right. off, the big guys right. paired off, the tag teams paired off, and like I feel like none of them were really like intertwined, like no. as if you, like this one really felt like I know you said this, like that they were filmed at the same time, just like smushed together and then smashed them together right later. and like you had the one part where spears was like looking for other guys but right then he got chased off by the inner circle motorcycle club as if that's a thing right and then like i don't know because like the last one i don't i can't think of any specifically but they're at least intertwined like i feel like omega and matt hardy probably chased sammy at the but i don't know there again. was just stuff like uh matt hardy reincarnating was funny right and, and he like Buck stuffed one of the um it was either Santana or Ortiz in, like, the ice thing. And Matt Buck doing the... Um, oh, the Northern Lights sorry, suplexes across? Yeah, the hold down the field. Or, like, uh, Sammy's running from Getting Hangman on the horse. Getting hit by the golf cart. Like, or, there were so um, many things. Oh, when um, Hangman and Hager met up in the bar and were, like, almost right. coexisting. They tried to remake that with this one being in the club a little bit. Anyways, right. talk about this but, year's. Um, So, after that, we got Jericho and MJF. They were fighting around the office area. And the biggest part of that was MJF getting sent through the glass of a door. Yeah, and um, I think the coach of the yeah, football team football was there as well. Yeah, there. Sport ball. <laughs> Sport ball, yeah, sure. Sport ball stuff. Uh, Hager and Wardlow brawled in a walk-in freezer. They did. Uh, partially. Uh, Spears and Guevara battled in a room with chairs. Because he's the chairman, Yeah, I guess. which I thought was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Proud and Powerful and FTR battled in a nightclub with Conan as DJ, which I think was the best part <laughs> and my favorite. A cash Wheeler just whipping yeah, that looked beer pretty bottles nuts. at Ortiz. Yep, and smash, hitting <laughs> with everyone, too. Right, I yep. thought that was really funny. Yep. Um, Hager took some Wardlow through like a stack it was like a thing stuff? in like know. a wood pallet stack. or yeah. I don't, It was a stack thing. Yeah, it looked okay. Uh, Jericho and MJ brawled in the Daily's Place crowd. Spears and Sammy bowed back in the ring. And so Guevara hit a wicked stepsister on Spears in the the corner chair and a 630 sent on to nab the win. So yeah, they gave, because he took the loss last year, right? His team was doing great, Sammy I'm talking about. And he right, ended up... he did. He took the one-winged angel through the... I watched all this on... The reason I sound like I remember stuff is because they talked about a lot of this on the buy-in, right? That you weren't watching. So I got a nice recap of... Oh, I thought you watched it. So I think I, that's what I kind of felt, that they were going to give Sammy his win back here. And they did this year. Um... I thought this was good enough. I laughed at some parts, but this year the laughs were different. Last year it came from stuff that they were... It's hard to explain. Like, they... This was I like I laughed at, it. like, because he got hit really hard with the garbage can or, or whatever, right? Or bottles or... Where it wasn't such a clever... I found it was a lot more clever last year. Mm -hmm. um, nowhere near as entertaining as the first version of this match. Yeah. I found the uh, inner circle entrance lame, like, trying too hard right off the bat, but the rest of it was fun enough. Nowhere near my favorite match on this show... I don't think, like I said, it's going to stay with me like last year's did. I remember stuff from last year. I probably won't remember stuff from this. On top of you that... You remember stuff. You watch the buy-in. <laughs> I'm proud of myself. You remember the buy-in. <laughs> well, I, re I do remember no, some know, of those spots I know, regardless. I know. I'm just kidding. On I'm top of that, as I feared, uh, the win or disband stipulation they put on this telegraphed the result, right? right. That's what and I said I was, as soon as they did that. I, I said this like they... I knew they were going to win. I knew they... Well, I, didn't I listened think they to a ton have. of stuff that was like, oh, yeah, I think this is it for inner... I'm like, what are you guys talking about? I think about? this should be it or no. it should have been it. No. it There's no way they're doing it yet. Yeah, I know. I think it should have been. So... 
to be honest, I liked the match, but I thought it was kind of an anticlimactic end to the show because this show had three or four I matches I liked I significantly good, more right? than but this. It really started off like at the beginning. It felt like, damn, this is like crazy, you know. To be fair, it, as well, I may have been tired by this point, right, and not enjoying yeah. it as much as I could have. I wanted to like this more than I did. I don't think it was bad, but I don't think it was great either. What did you right. think? Um, I thought this was great. It was pretty entertaining. Um, my favorite chunk was probably the nightclub chunk, and I thought cash whipping beer bottles and stuff at ortiz that's just mm-hmm. really funny and like actually ortiz taking it too it was overall an- good and entertaining uh it was just missing something that the first steam stampede had maybe just like you said that clever comedy or just like maybe just the the it actually felt like a tag match like yeah like the stuff is actually intertwined yeah this was like four or five or individual like, matches or like i even remember omega was in the bar what because i remember he had like milk i think or whatever right yes. with hangman and like and like it wasn't always just these guys paired off like it here it, like it was here like I right. already mentioned but like different guys I think paired off at different times right and I don't know this one just felt like they all went and did their separate things whereas they did, like right the away. last one just felt like they did that as well but they also were still intertwined and like it felt more like a match kind right. of I um in my opinion um and I found the first one a little more entertaining too. I don't think they should have gone into Daly's place at the end because I think the whole point is they fight in the stadium. Um, I know they're allowed to like go around the stadium and on Daly's place is kind right of attached, yep. but I preferred in the stadium I guess because the fans were there. They wanted to kind of incorporate that. But, right. Uh, good and entertaining, just not as much as the first one. Right. Uh, so overall thoughts on this pay per view? I thought this was a really entertaining show. I thought that there were five really strong matches on the card. The page cage opener. Buck, Mox, and Kingston, which I think was probably my match of the night. I'd have yep. to think a little more deeply, but I think, I think so. I think the triple threat may give it a bit of a run for its yeah. money, but I think either one of those matches, I wouldn't blame you for picking. Like, yep. Omega Pack Cassidy main event, Deeb Riho buy-in match, and the Baker Sheeta match. The worst match of the night, I thought, was easily Cody Agogo. For sure. And the three remaining ones, the Miro, Archer, Sting, and Stadium Stampede, I thought that were at least passable to good. So Agreed. there was nothing... Like, Cody Agogo, I couldn't have cared less i don't maybe it wasn't bad but i I didn't like it but everything else i I at least liked it um so i think they delivered another quality pay-per-view here that kept me pretty entertained for throughout four hours basically right that'd be my only criticism cut a match cody or sting match maybe a couple packages along the way trim like half hour to 45 minutes off this and i'd be thrilled pandemic wwe pay-per-views have all been under three hours i think which i'm loving but anyways uh, quality stuff, so I can't complain too much. I'm going to give this pay-per-view an A-. minus. I would highly recommend it to people, especially a few of those matches that we talked about along the way. So a very entertaining pay-per-view. Not, I didn't feel like I wasted my money or my time, so I gave it an A-. minus. What about you? Mm-hmm. Um, overall, great pay-per-view. I thought the opener was perfect. Uh, Hangman and Cage, that was. Uh, tag match is even better and one of the best, if not the best match of the night, I think. Uh, the that and the triple threat are interchangeable. Both were awesome. Yep. Uh, Casino Bar Roll was fine, but kind of lacked action and some creative eliminations. Uh, Cody and Gogo was boring and basic and easily worst match of the night. Uh, Baker versus Sheeta was stellar, but I feel like despite being good, they could have gone a little better. Um, out, the tag match, um, the non-title one, uh, was fine, but the result was horribly wrong. Uh, the three-way match is great. I hope we see more major titles defending in multi-person matches if they end up like this one. Like, if this is what yeah. we're getting from these multi-man matches, then sign me up for They more. don't bother me anyway. Right. Some people don't like them, but I, I generally do. I think do. it depends. Yeah. I think, uh, especially in WWE, it depends on the field. Yeah, I don't... But some people are like, as soon as they hear it's a triple threat, like, oh my god, I, I don't know. I'm open to them. I... I don't know. Usually, I'm in Raw, so I'm kind of skeptical because they tend to do well, like skeptical the of taking everything turns. Yeah. yeah, I know. Uh, same Sam was good, and entertaining. Although the first is better, which I think makes this one seem not good. But I think this one was good. I don't think it was bad. Uh, I think it's just really. I don't know if it's unfair, but like just really hard to compare those because it just makes this one seem so much worse but yep. this one was still good yep. overall an awesome pay-per-view and totally worth buying even though i didn't pay at all <laughs> but True. i think it, it's worth your money right i think um yeah like and I, a definite a minus like i justify it to your mother like the we get a ton of enjoyment out of this company over the year 
we now do a podcast where we talk about it. They only do four pay-per-views a year, right? Right. So it's not and like not they're... only are they better consistently than WWE's, but I think they're also they don't come by as much. No, that's what they I mean. They even come by less than takeovers, which are which only by one pay-per-view, but like which are pretty rare as well. Um, great stuff. And notice this compared to our um bonus episode on WWE's last pay-per-view. Yeah, I think it was about a B or something, right? So yeah, somewhere or, in that range. And not and that one also had a match with zombies. So we need to revisit our predictions I'll before we go. Do that. Um. So first, the casino. <sighs> I think. Royal. I mean, we can just agree. I'm a genius. No, you won by one pick. Sorry. Uh, what was the first two uh, words of that? So, uh. You won. Referring by to me. one. By one. Okay, carry on. The smallest possible difference. Cares that. Uh, Casino Battle Royal, you won- uh, wait, neither of us got that, actually. Uh, but if somebody won- were to be closer... That does not matter! <laughs> you're, plus, your guy cheated! You're, he was, he was I on took the Christian outside. Cage, who I was in first, Joker. and made it to almost the end. No, he was in the first of four. And you took the Joker, who yeah, came in last, and was in for five minutes. Yeah, but Cage also sat on the outside on his lazy butt. That's a win for me. No, it's not! <laughs> Carry on. Uh, Casino Battle Royal, the Joker entrant, mm. we didn't get that Nobody at all. got anything there. Uh, uh, Hangman versus uh, Cage. Both uh, of us. We both got Page. That's 1-1. One, one. Uh, Sting and Darby, we both picked. 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Cody. 3-3. Three, three. Which is 3-3. Three, 4-4 three, four, four for picking Miro. I picked everything is all you need uh, to know, people. No, you didn't. Other than the Battle Royal, whatever. Uh, Hikaru Shida, Baker, we both picked Baker. Next one? Uh, the tag title yeah, match, you go got ahead. that one. Talk about it. I um, got it right, and you? Got you wrong. did not get it right, so I win. <laughs> you brag like this. Stadium and you Stampede. Don't, you don't like it when I brag. Stadium Stampede, we you both got like right. You don't like when I brag. And yeah, and then we both got Omega right, so you won by the... Po- like I said about the way in one, the smallest possible Another difference. Another dominant victory, I'll Do- take it. <laughs> dominant? Yep, okay. crushed you. No. But anyways, that's going to bring us to the end of this yeah. review because I want to move on with my day. So thank you for joining us again. It's I've done. Nine o'clock. I've done two podcasts today, so I'm oh, podcasting. Oh yeah, check out. out the Ring of Honor if yeah, you're interested. Ring of Honor 506, I published a couple hours before this and then found some more and time. if you haven't checked it already, what was our r- most recent one? Uh, 45? Was yeah, 45, 45 was we released on Saturday. Um, and 46 coming up uh, this Saturday. Yep, we'll be As back usual. on Saturday again uh, to put out episode 46. So join us then. And until then, thanks for joining us. And we'll see you then. So take care.